Hey everyone, Steve here with Phantom History. Thanks so much for checking us out on YouTube. And if you enjoy our content, make sure you subscribe. Enjoy this episode. It's always my goal to keep Phantom History ad free. And it's thanks to Patreon supporters that I can do just that. Please consider supporting the podcast by signing up as a Patreon supporter at phantomhistory.com and access bonus contents like full interviews, unique videos, and more. Thanks to all who have supported Phantom History so far, and enjoy this episode. The scream sounded like it was right outside the door. However, the scream was not a response to any specific question, and it seemed to come out of nowhere. The team from Professional Paranormal Investigations immediately jumped up to investigate the noise, since they knew every member of the group was huddled together in the dark basement and the rest of the large building remained empty. They found nothing, but they do have a theory of what made that sound. The legend of Sarah, the little girl who attended Post Town Elementary School and allegedly fell to her death down a flight of stairs, is rumored to still haunt the school originally built in the 1930s. Maybe it was that young girl who let out the scream. Or... Maybe it was a victim of one of the several railroad accidents that happened in the vicinity. Maybe it was something even darker. I'm Steve Blanchard. Welcome to Phantom History. In the rural southwestern corner of Ohio sits the unincorporated community of Post Town, a village in Butler County about one mile north of the town of Middletown. The community, named after its first postmaster, Peter Post, in 1848, eventually became a shipping point along the Cincinnati, Hamilton, and Dayton Railroad line. While the railroad brought in some modest prosperity, it also brought along tragedy. In 1891, a passenger train collided with a freight train near Post Town and left four people dead and 50 others injured. On July 4, 1910, another far worse train accident occurred on the line when an engineer of the Big Four Passenger Trail ran off schedule after a detour. That change had a trickle-down effect in scheduling conflicts and led to a full freight train colliding with the passenger train. All the passengers in the two cars closest to the engine died instantly or were seriously injured. In all, 19 people died at the scene of the 1910 accident and 17 others died from their injuries at hospitals in surrounding towns and counties. Those who were injured and needed immediate attention were taken to a plot of land nearby where a makeshift triage was built. That plot of land eventually became the site of Post Town Elementary School, and investigators believe those tragic train accidents are a big part of why the building is so haunted today. Steve Hodgson, with Professional Paranormal Investigations, sees a direct connection between the hauntings at Post Town Elementary and those train tracks, which are still in use today. I mean, come on, many times people talk about the connection of water, and water helps, you know, paranormal activity, spirits and stuff. There's some kind of energy in there. Well, I, my personal philosophy and feeling and theory, I should say, on that, it's the same thing with trains. Because if you think about, you know, we're in Indiana in the middle of nowhere, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and you see the trains going along and they're usually running along a power line that's running across the top, or even, yeah, because there's no third there, it's usually up on top. And when you know when a train is coming close by, those lines get electrified. So it seems that even like when the train is passing, Activity starts inside of a room sometimes or in a closet or something like that where we have a recorder and will continue after it's passed for a little bit. And I honestly believe that has to have something to do with paranormal activity. Elvin Potter, who works with Steve on paranormal investigations, believes that the spirits of the victims of those train wrecks are definitely still on the grounds where Post Town Elementary School sits. However, he believes that there are many other entities that roam the halls of the school as well, who may not have a direct tie to those railroad tragedies. 
would say with what we've had during our investigations, we've definitely communicated with some of those that have maybe possibly died in the train wreck, but there's a lot of activity in there that was definitely not connected to the train wreck. Um, maybe past students, definitely not all train wreck related, no doubt. Steve believes that one spirit connected to the building and not connected to the tragedies of the railway is that of a little girl who died tragically in the halls of the school, at least according to local legend. There's a little girl who used to attend the school called Sarah, and the legend is that this girl actually died by falling down a flight of stairs, which, you know, it's commonly referred to as Sarah's stairwell. Uh, there's nothing that proves that, but it's a legend that's there. And there is, without a doubt, a little girl that has been seen in that school by many groups. Uh, right after COVID reopened, you know, when things opened up, we were one of the first groups to go back in and just to investigate. We wanted to get out just as badly to see what people in there. And we were sitting inside one of the rooms in the basement. And we heard this little girl scream. Well, we almost knocked each other over and tried to get to the door to get out into the hallway. And we each went in different directions to make sure there wasn't coming from outside or there wasn't someone in the school. We found nothing. But this scream was loud as if if I would, could scream at that high pitch right now, that's how loud it was to us inside that room. Elvin was also part of that investigation, which consisted of four people total. He recalls hearing that scream as well, and says it was unlike anything he had experienced before. I think we were just in there talking, just yeah. conversing, and it just came about. Literally sounded like it was standing right outside the door. It was that loud. Every one of us. That was amazing. It was one of the loudest screams I've ever heard. There's a chance that Elvin had encountered the young girl called Sarah before, but he's not entirely sure. What he does know, though, is that an encounter with a spirit in the room that was once the principal's office of the school made him a true believer in the paranormal, and it's an experience he says he will never forget. Walk in the principal's office, I kind of get this feeling of sadness a little bit, and it felt like a little girl literally reached out, grabbed my hand and touched my hand and wanted to hold my hand. And I felt so, I don't know, I was very emotional when that happened. I, I felt it. I mean, there's no, there's nothing around me. I'm walking. My hands are out just walking casually. And, you know, when you feel something, just reach out and grab your hand. There's nothing there. If you don't believe in that, I don't know what else I can do to, to make you believe. Oh, I did not feel threatened, and honestly, the way I felt, I felt like she felt like she was being threatened, whether it be by us or something else in the building. It definitely felt like she was looking for somebody to help her. You know, maybe maybe she was comforting me, but to me, it felt like she was looking for me to comfort her. Sarah, if that's who the spirit was, who reached for Elvin's hand and screamed outside the basement door, may be a friendly spirit just looking for human connection. However, if she is afraid of something in the building, it could be the entity Steve encountered in a dark hallway on the second floor of the school, along with his fellow investigators. You know, there is definitely, I don't know what it is. It's not human or it has ever been human on the second floor. I mean, it's something that's really, really bad on the second floor. And it lives right there. We had stayed late after an investigation, and there's a chair there, so I sat in the chair, and they spread out down the hallway. The moment we turned off all the flashlights, I could hear something walking right towards me, breathing and walking right at me. So instantly, I turned the flashlight on to see what the heck this was, and was nothing there. And I would turn off the flashlight and we'd do it again. And it did it about five times. Uh, it has never identified itself. I know my wife sat there once in that chair and uh, whatever it was tried to take her over and actually physically made her ill. Something with the, uh, the blood vessels of her eyes 
one or two of them have popped or heard something from it. So, and that's never happened prior to this or after this. So whatever's there, I don't play with. I don't know. I'm not afraid of anything. But I also am not stupid in going to play with something I don't know what it is. I know many psychic mediums have come through the school and have all said the same thing. There's something on the second floor. Fortunately, according to Stephen Elvin, there seem to be far fewer malevolent spirits in Post Town Elementary than other, more friendly spirits. In fact, thanks to the use of a new piece of technology the team uses called a Phasma Box, they are fairly certain there are seven spirits in the school in all. At least, that's what they've been told. Admittedly, Steve and Elvin say they are still experimenting with the Phasma Box, and there is still a lot to learn about what the technology can do and how it works. It was saying everyone's name, except mine. It refused to say my name the other day. We asked how many spirits were there, and it said seven. And it did it on two or three different occasions that night. It said there were seven different spirits there. And I really don't doubt it. I think there are different entities in different places, you know, depending on where you're at in the school. You know, there's, there is someone in the principal's hallway that we've actually seen walking back and forth. That spirit in the principal's office is different than the young girl that Elvin says took his hand. This entity appeared as a full body apparition to Steve and he believes it could be a former employee of the school or even one of the victims of the train accidents. We had the door closed in the principal's office and it had one of those little like, square windows you know, that's on the doors and I actually saw him walk right by the glass. I mean, actually I fell over myself getting up. I actually got up and <laughs> ran to the door and opened the door and there was no one there. From what I saw, it was a full body. It was not a shadow. I mean, I could make out the face and everything. Now, it's possible it was one of the caretakers of the school. It could also have been someone that even passed from one of the train routes. I mean, we have no idea because it didn't hang out so we could talk to. It seems every level and every room in Post Town Elementary has an entity connected with it, according to Elvin and Steve. Through the use of the Phasma Box, they've learned a little bit about the spirits that dwell within the old building. But there are still a lot of things they don't understand and questions that have been left unanswered. One room in particular has a unique haunting. The room, called the Bad Teacher's Room, because that's where a teacher allegedly treated students poorly and was unskilled in education, is on the lower level of the school. Well, the teacher that was supposed to be in that room was uh, really nasty with the students. Didn't really care for the students that well and was really obnoxious with them. So they yes. call her the bad teacher as far as her teaching abilities as a bad teacher. I mean, you sit in that room, and there's many times we've been in that room, and there's lockers. It's like these old tools yeah. that some of them have lockers actually in the room. And these lockers would just start rattling on their own. I mean, no trains coming, no nothing, you know, doesn't do it in any other room. They just start rattling in there. And how many times have we seen things down that hallway? I mean, you walk Never down the hallway and it's almost as if something is following you down that hallway. Post Town seems to have a lot of movement within its hallways and both Elvin and Steve are convinced that the energy from passing trains, the history of the land, and the building's time as a school help fuel the shadows throughout the property. Some of those movements could be residual, others are possibly active. One of the rooms, appropriately called the doll room, because of the large number of dolls displayed there, also seems to attract paranormal activity, according to Steve. Sometimes you don't know what you're dealing with. Uh, you know, you're just going to see something move, okay? Uh, you know, something just go down the hallway. Or even there's a doll room on the second floor where one of the dolls will just start up and move on its own, okay? Which is kind of creepy. Just the doll room itself is creepy, okay? But then to see something move or start or actually start up 
is very creepy in itself. And I always like to sit in the doorway. I have a good view of the long hallway and I can always see something moving towards us, coming down the hallway towards that room. Whatever resides within the Post Town Elementary School seems content to stay there. Professional Paranormal Investigations, Steve and Elvin's company, has been inside the building more than a dozen times, and each visit produces more evidence and revisiting certain locations within the school seem to produce similar results each time. But why, exactly, is the building so haunted? The train wrecks likely contribute to most of the energy there, according to Steve, and the building's long history as a school from the 1930s all the way up until the year 2000 could also be a contributing factor, he believes. Some spirits like to stay where they had positive experiences, like students who enjoyed school or teachers who enjoyed educating them. Others, however, may feel trapped because of guilt, which is likely a larger contributing factor in the case of Post Town. At least, that's what Steve believes. I'm looking at 1891 and 1910, where the two big train wrecks that took place. Right there, within like a quarter of a mile from the school. Yeah. And they did use the school as a triage at one point. So I think when you take that kind of trauma, negative energy, and all that stuff, and you put it into a location and into an area that bleeds out into the area. I know that we did investigation years before in a house where there was a train wreck. It was about a quarter of a mile down the road. And we actually, when we closed our eyes, we saw like 25 people pass over into the light that had not passed into the light before. And you couldn't look into the light because it was so bright that I had to actually open my eyes to the dark room because what I was seeing with my eyes closed was so bright it was burning my eyes. You're not supposed to look into that light or see that really light. And I thought it was just me, but there were five other people in the room and all five people said the same thing. I'm looking at that same kind of energy that, I don't want to say the bad energy, but the trauma, the tragedy and stuff gets carried over. And there are always people that are afraid to pass over. I mean, it might even be the conductor or something that feels responsible for what happened on there. Or, you know, someone that was on the train that could have done something and did, or thought they could have done something and didn't do it. And they're still around in that area. And yet the school is the perfect place. It's an empty school. Why not? That's the place to go. For more information on Post Town Elementary School, visit posttownschool.com. To learn more about Steve and Elvin, or to reach them about an investigation, contact them through their website, professionalparanormalinvestigations.com, or through their Facebook page. Thanks to both Steve Hodgson and Elvin Potter for sharing their experiences with me for this episode. To hear the full interview, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of Phantom History, which gives you access to bonus content to each episode of the podcast. Music from this episode was provided by Silverman Sound, Purple Planet Music, and Chad Crouch. Please follow Phantom History on all social media channels and consider signing up for the weekly newsletter at phantomhistory.com so you don't miss an episode or updates on bonus content. And, as always, thanks for listening. Hey, Steve here. Thanks so much for checking out that content. And before you go, I wanted to let you know that if you become a supporter of the podcast through Patreon, you'll gain access to bonus content. And if you subscribe to our newsletter at phantomhistory.com, we will let you know when that bonus content becomes available and when a new episode drops. And one more thing, I'm always looking for ideas for future episodes. So if you have an experience or a location you think that I should focus on, please let me know through the website or you can email me directly at podcast at phantomhistory.com.